page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be His kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all thoughts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses came down from Mount Sinai. As he came down from the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant in his hand, Moses did not know that the skin of his face shone because he had been talking with God. When Aaron and all the Israelites saw Moses, the skin of his face was shining, and they were afraid to come near him. But Moses called to them, and Aaron and all the leaders of the congregation returned to him, and Moses spoke with them. Afterward, all the Israelites came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. When Moses had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And when he came out and told the Israelites what he had been commanded, the Israelites would see the face of Moses, that the skin of his face was shining, and Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Say together in unison, Psalm 99. The Lord is King. Let the people tremble. He is enthroned upon the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is fire of all peoples. Let him confess his name, which is great and awesome. He is the Lord.
The second reading is from 2 Corinthians. Since then we have such a hope, we act with great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened. Indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant, that same veil is still there. Since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day when Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent in those days till and told no one any of the things they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The 
And Moses came. was the expression of God's will. And so far as we follow the ways that Moses mediated to us, we place ourselves within the divine will and therefore within divine Terrify the people. Our ability to follow the way outlined by the law is flawed. Fall. We are earthen vessels asked to carry a very precious treasure. We fall short. We miss the mark. We move in the wrong direction, getting lost from the way. We have proven to be tarnished images of God, as inadequate to live out the law as the cold stone tablets were inadequate to contain the terrible voice of God. To be glorified, we must become something else. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, we must be transformed. Only grace, the grace of God, can do this, and only with our consent. To show us a more perfect way and a more perfect image of God, God sent His Son. On that mountain, with Peter, James, and John, Jesus was transfigured. His glory became visible to his chosen witnesses. It shone forth from him, not simply as a reflection, but as a, so a source of divine light. The vision he granted Jesus fulfilled the law. He lived a human life with his human will perfectly conformed to the divine will. He invites us to follow him. Follow him in his way of love. Follow him in the way of the cross, of self-emptying and self-giving. Follow him in his way that leads to glorious transformation. That is the path we try to follow. We know that we're not perfect at it. We know that we will stumble and sin as we have done before. We count on that grace, the love of God that refuses to let us go, that tenacious love that, that pursues us to the ends of the earth. On this eve of the season of Lent, we are beginning to think about the process by which God transforms us into His children. 
We're surely thinking about things like what we might give up for Lent this year. And at the same time, we are surrounded by the news of a senseless war of aggression by Russia in Ukraine. We are reminded of the worst of human sin. Sin that creates chaos, death, and destruction. You may be experiencing anxiety because of the images you've seen on television or the internet. You, you may be worried about people you know in Ukraine or the family and friends of others you may know. This morning, with the image of a transfigured Jesus on the mountaintop before our eyes, we blink at the glare and wipe tears from our eyes, noting how far we are from that perfection, from that vision of God's glory. The chasm between us and God seems vast and impassable. We resonate with righteous rage at the unprovoked attack on an independent nation. We, we call for more sanctions, more support for Ukraine, maybe even direct action. We are horrified by the violence. We are sickened by the brash ambition and disregard for human life. We feel helpless to stop this injustice. At the same time, we look to God for help. We may wonder where God is when such an awful thing is happening. Why is evil allowed to prosper? Peter, James, and John may have had similar thoughts as they came back down from that mountaintop, descending back into the real world after wishing to stay on the high mountaintop with Jesus. Moses and Elijah, they ended up back in the valley of the shadow of death with Herod, Caesar, and Putin. All that was left to them was faith. Faith to follow that path. Faith to follow their Lord, faith to follow Jesus to the cross. At the cross, all was lost. Life, dignity, potential, hopes, all lost. Then, it was transformed. Life was renewed, dignity perfected, potential exceeded, hopes fulfilled. Faith carries us forward into this season of Lent, the season of wilderness. Walking with our Lord, we open our hearts for transformation, inviting God to do God's work on us. We pray that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for peace. We pray for our enemies. We pray for the innocent. God bless us. God help us. Amen. Let us stand down and confess our faith as we say together.
the Nicene Creed, page 358 in the prayer book. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, and heir of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God and Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of the name of the one name of the Father. Through him all things were made.
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Professional greeter. She's the best in the business. Uh, this is Joan over here. So uh, Wednesday is uh, Ash Wednesday, and that means that Tuesday is Shrove Tuesday. Normally we would have a, a pancake dinner on Shrove Tuesday, but we've decided that we're not in a place right now where we can do a full-on uh, meal, and uh, so as an alternative, we've made today Shrove Tuesday Sunday. So uh, there's all kinds, all manner of fried dough down in the parish hall. We'll have the windows and doors open uh, and uh, do join us. Uh, and if you, if you don't want to stay, swing by and grab something for the road. Um, there's lots of really good stuff down there. Things I have never heard of before. Um, I, just, I can't even pronounce them. So do come uh, and join us. Wednesday, Ash Wednesday, 7.30 a.m., 12.15 and 7 p.m. are the three services. Ash is imposed at all three services. Uh, you've got till then, till uh, the end of the day, Tuesday, to do your Lent Madness, which is kind of a play on, um, on March Madness, but with saints. So uh, get involved with that. Your $5 donation uh, benefits parishioners' ministry. Next Sunday, we will have Evensong uh, right here, 5 o'clock next week. Uh, and then the following week, not Ash Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, we will begin our Lenten study. 
It's a book called Witnesses, or Witness at the Cross. It's by Amy Jo Levine, who is the author we studied last year during Lent, and it's the similar uh, format will be on Zoom, uh, not with just uh, people from St. Andrews, but folks from uh, different churches in our uh, convocation. Uh, and Amy Jill Levine is a very unique uh, person. She herself is uh, Jewish, but she is a New Testament scholar, and she is a delight. Uh, she's very easy to read, and last year we managed to get her on the Zoom call with us on our last uh, session. So I'm not, I'm not promising that's going to happen again this year. Uh, but we have the books in the office, if you can swing by during the week to pick one up, uh, or call Allison anytime, she'll hold on to one for you, and you, of course you can order them uh, yourself. Uh, any any other? There's an evening song this evening at St. John's in Belfond at 5 p.m. Oh, I did not know that. Yes. Evening song this evening at St. St. John's in Belfond. song and benediction of the Blessed Sacrament at 5 p.m. at St. John's in Belfond. It all starts at 5. At 5, yes. 5 p.m. evening song, then benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. At, at St. John's, our companion parish over in Belfon. Um, anything else? Do come and join us for coffee oh, yeah. oh, hour, please. Uh, yes, on that madness, dark madness. Yes, or saints can't jump. Saints can't jump. No. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note, uh, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave Himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
continue our worship with the great thanksgiving. Eucharistic Prayer A, page 361. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have caused the new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn, to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is alive. Christ is risen. Christ is alive again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by Him and with Him and in Him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not Give to God for 
before the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.